This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this long shadow text effect with an aged texture applied to it using Inkscape. Before we get started, though, if you'd like to learn everything that there is to know about Inkscape, be sure to check out my Inkscape Master Class. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So getting us started here in Inkscape, let's first set up the document for our workflow here. So I'm going to come up here to the top left corner and where it says toggle snapping, I'm just going to make sure that is disabled for now. I'll come up here to where it says view, make sure I have custom selected, and then come up here to zoom and zoom in at one-to-one -one like that. Now, if you notice, we have this page border on the screen here. I'm just going to press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse to the right just to get that page border off of the viewfinder for now. We're going to work out here in open space, and then when we're done, we're going to change the page border to fit the design. So once you've done that, let's grab the text tool now and create some text. I'm going to click on the canvas to get the blinking cursor, and I'm just going to use the letters ink for this demonstration. And I want to select all those letters by pressing Control A and change the font up here in the font drop down menu. Now the font I'm using is over here called Varsity Team. For this sort of design, I would recommend using this font right here because of the style of the font. It makes it easier to work with. I will have a link in the description of the video to where you can download and install that font. So make sure to go ahead and, and install that font before getting started. And once I've done that, I'm gonna grab the Select tool. I'm just gonna scale this up and I'm gonna hold Control to lock the proportions like that. Let me move this towards the center over here. I'm gonna to go to Path, Object to Path, and then go to Object, Ungroup, and now that is no longer a text object. These are now individual letters. So let me click off of that to deselect everything. I'm gonna take this letter K and bring this over here to the right. I'm gonna hold Control to lock it onto the horizontal axis, and then I'll do the same thing with the letter I over here. I'll move this over like that. Basically what we're doing here is we're spacing out these letters. We wanna have a lot of space between these letters in order for us to do what we're gonna do in this tutorial. So once we're finished, we'll go back and, and bring the letters closer back together. But for now, we need them spaced out. So with them spaced out like that, what I'm gonna do now is click and drag over all three of them and go to Path, Union. So now they're unified. So now I will open up the Fill and Stroke menu by going to um, Object, Fill and Stroke. And that'll open up this menu over here on the right-hand side of your screen. So I'm gonna apply a yellow color to this. I'm going to give this a linear gradient over here in the Fill tab. I'm gonna click this button that says Linear Gradient. I'm gonna grab the Gradient tool, click on this end of the gradient right here, and bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm gonna change this to a different color, maybe like a reddish orange like that. And then I'll take this end of the gradient and put this down here towards the bottom of the text. And I'll take this end and put it towards the top of the text like that. I'm gonna hold Control so it goes straight up and down like that. So now we end up with some gradient text like that. So what I'm gonna do now is let me grab the select tool. I'm gonna to duplicate this by pressing Control D on the keyboard and it's gonna create a duplicate copy. Even though nothing visually changed on the screen, you can see there is indeed a duplicate copy there. So I'm gonna take that duplicate copy and I'm gonna make that a dark shade of red like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this again by pressing Control D again and I will make this one just a random different color, maybe something like green so we can see it better. Now I'm going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to press down on the arrow key, and then I'm going to press right on the arrow key. And it's going to offset it by two steps like that, one down and one right. And I'm basically going to repeat that process a few more times like that until we end up with this red text looking the way it does right here. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm creating the inner shadow of this text right here. So that is what I'm paying attention to here. That size right there is pretty good. Maybe I'll do one more step like that. And once you've done that, hold shift and click on the red text so that you have both of those text items selected and go to extensions, generate from path, extrude. And from the mode, I wanna make sure I have polygon selected and I'm gonna click apply. And then click, close out of that menu by clicking the X. I'm gonna take this green text right here, or you know what, let me undo that by pressing control Z. Let me click off of the graphic to deselect everything first. And then I'll take this green text object and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And then I will take this newly generated uh, extruded path right here and select that. Make sure you have that selected and not the text. You'll know you have it selected when you see down here in the status indicator. If I have the text selected, it's going to be red. If I have the 
extruded path selected, it's going to be those partially uh, transparent color of black right there. So let me ungroup that by going to Object, Ungroup, and then Path, Union. And then I will hold Shift and click on the red text and go to Path, Intersection so that we end up with this right here where it looks like it's uh, an inner shadow on the text. It almost kind of looks like the text is carved into the canvas like that. So let's click off of that to deselect everything. What I'm gonna do now is let me click on just this red text right here, this red shadow, and I'm gonna give this a linear gradient as well. I'm going to grab the gradient tool. I'm gonna to take the transparent end of the gradient and put it down here, and then take the opaque end of the gradient and put it up here like that. Again, holding shift to lock uh, lock it onto the vertical axis like that. Maybe I'll bring that down a little more. Okay, that looks good. So let's grab the select tool now. I'm going to click on the yellow text right there to make sure I have that selected. And then I'm going to du duplicate that by pressing Control D. And I want to give this an outline. So I'm going to hold Shift and click on this color yellow down here to give this a yellow outline. And if you zoom in on this by holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel, you can see that there is an outline there. We want that outline to be a little bigger though, and we want to get rid of the fill color. So let me click on the X right here, the red X to get rid of the fill color. And I'll come over here to the stroke style menu. And I'm just going to hover my cursor over these numbers right here and just roll up the mouse wheel to increase the size of that stroke right there. And that size right there looks pretty good. I'll leave that as it is. Where it says join, make sure you have the miter join right here so we have square corners. And then let's convert this stroke to a path. So we'll go to object, we'll go to path, Stroke to path. Now let's zoom out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate that outline by pressing Control D. And I will give this a different color like green. And again, I'm gonna use my arrow keys down and right to move this over like that. And I'll take it about that far. What we're doing with this object right here, we're creating the base of the text, which is located right here, this dark red area. That's what we're creating right here. So you wanna position it accordingly. That right there looks pretty good. I'll leave that as it is. And then I'm gonna duplicate this one more time by pressing Control D, and I will make this one an even different color, maybe even red. And I'll move this one down here like this. Or you know what, let me make this, let me make this orange for now. Take this, move this down into the left like that. This one is going to represent the shadow being casted here. So that one needs to be placed accordingly. So I'm going to place this one over here like that. Now let's zoom in on this so we can see it better. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel. I want to select this yellow outline that we originally created and then hold shift and select this green outline that we created next. And with them both selected, go to extensions, uh, generate from path, extrude, click apply, and then close out of it like that. Now let me zoom out a little bit, click off of it to deselect everything. Select the newly extruded area like that and go to Object, Ungroup, and then Path, Union. And then I want to get rid of the black stroke going around it or the outline. So I'm going to hold Shift and click on the red X over here. And let me come over here to the Fill menu. Under the HSL tab, I'm going to come over here to the Alpha channel and bring that all the way up so that it's visible. And then I will send that to the bottom with this button right here that says uh, Lower Selection to the Bottom. Okay, so now I will make that the same color of dark red that I previously applied to that inner shadow right there. So let me apply that color. And now I'm going to select the orange outline right here, hold shift, select the green outline so that we have them both selected and go to extensions, generate from path, extrude. And we're doing the same thing here. Just click apply, close out of that, click off of it to deselect everything, take just this black shape right here that we just extruded. Go to Object, Ungroup, Path, Union. Get rid of the black outline by holding Shift and clicking on the X over here. Bring the alpha channel all the way up and then send this to the bottom with this button right here that says Lower Selection to the bottom. And I'm actually gonna take the opacity of this and bring that down a little bit for now. We're gonna go back and work with this later, but for now I just wanna bring that opacity down. And then we can click off with the Deselect Everything. So I'm going to take this orange shape right here, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Take this green shape right here, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And if I zoom out, you can see it's starting to come together here. I want to add some more color in here first though. So let me select this base of the text right here, this dark red object, and I'm going to give this a linear gradient. 
and I'm going to grab the gradient tool and I'm going to make this end of the gradient. First of all, let me make that fully opaque like that. And I'm just going to make this a lighter color of red like that. And I'll take the lighter end of the gradient and put it down here. And the darker end of the gradient goes up here like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill in the base of the text here with shapes. As you can see here, it's darker down here at the bottom and it's darker over here in these little lips that come off the top of the, of the uh, letters there. So let's go and add that in. I'm going to grab, first of all, let me grab the select tool. Let me click off of it to deselect everything and let me enable snapping up here. Now, in this, under the snapping menu, I want to make sure I have this one enabled right here that says toggle snapping to cusp nodes, including rectangular corners. And if that's grayed out and you can't enable it, you may have to enable this one first and then you can enable that. So with that enabled, grab the Bezier pen, which is located over here, or you could press the letter B on the keyboard. Let me zoom in on this. I'm going to snap to this corner. Or you know what, before I do that, make sure you have the mode set to the proper mode, which is the first one here where it says create regular Bezier path. Select that one first. For whatever reason, this version of Inkscape always defaults to this one right here. So you will, if you're using this version of Inkscape, you'll have to manually click on that. So let me snap to this corner and click, snap to this corner and click. Same thing over here, same thing over here, and then back to the starting point like that. And we have that shape that we just drew in there like that. Now I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to draw this shape in here like this as well. And again, to move the page around like that, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. I'm going to come over here and fill in this shape as well. Do the same thing down here. And then I'll come up here and fill in this part of the top of the letter right here. And then I'm just going to go through and do this for the rest of the text. Okay, so once you're finished drawing the shapes, let's grab the select tool over here. Let's turn off snapping now. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to click and drag over the bottom of the text down here just to select those objects that I've just drawn. And I'm going to make them a darker shade of red. So let me grab the... Uh, the uh, dropper tool, which is located over here, or you could press the letter D. And I'm gonna sample this color right here to make that darker. I might even make that a little darker than it currently is. And then I wanna get rid of the black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And there we go. I'm gonna do the same thing up here to these items. So let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna click and drag over the top of the text to select those items right there. And I will make those a darker shade of red as well. Let me hold shift, click the red X to get rid of the outline. And for this, I want to make this one a little darker as well. Okay, looking better. Okay, so at this point, let's grab the select tool and click off of the, the graphic to deselect everything. At this point, we're almost done. We're just going to start bringing these letters together now. So I'm going to click and drag over everything here to make sure everything is selected. And then grab the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Click and drag over these nodes right here for this letter over here. And I'm just going to hold the left arrow key to bring this letter over like this so that it's closer together to the other letter. Okay, looking good. And then I'll click and drag over all of these letters right here, or just these two letters, and then bring both of those over by, again, holding down the left arrow key. Okay, looking good. And you can grab the select tool now and click off of it to deselect everything. And what we're gonna do next is let's create the background this, um, this colored background with the gradient for the text here. So let's go back in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle going over the text like that. And I'm gonna send that, I'm gonna grab the select tool. I'm gonna lower that to the bottom. And then I'm gonna open up the align and distribute menu, which is located over here. Or you can press the letters uh, Control, Shift, and A on your keyboard. And from the relative to, I want to make sure I have last selected chosen. With this rectangle selected, I'm going to hold shift and click on the text item right there and just make sure I have that centered up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And now I'm going to change the page border to fit this selection. To do that, just press control shift R on the keyboard. And if you click off of it to deselect everything, you can see that the page border now represents that shape there. So let me control Z that to put that back. I'm going to change the, the color of this background here. Let me go to the fill and stroke menu. I'm going to make this a lighter shade of purple, maybe something like that. I will give this a radial gradient. Grab the gradient tool. 
click on this end of the gradient up here and bring the opacity of that all the way up. And I'm going to double click this line right here to add a new stop into that gradient. Now I'm going to take this middle stop, this center node of the gradient, and I'm going to make that lighter like that. And I'll take this end of the, this stop right here and I'll make that slightly lighter, not by much, just a little bit. And then I'll bring this out a little bit like that. Let me bring this stop up like that. I'm going to hold control to bring that up. And then I'll take this end over here. I'm going to hold control and shift and bring this out like that. Let me just adjust that a little bit. Okay, looking pretty good. So what I will do now is I will grab the select tool. I will take the text right here, bring the op take the text shadow rather, bring the opacity all the way up. And I want to make this a similar shade as this purple over here. So let me grab the dropper and sample that right there. And there we go. Now you can grab the select tool and you can make this sh you can make the shadow darker or lighter based on your own preference. So I'm going to leave mine right about there. So the final step of this tutorial would be to add the texture to the finished design here. So to do that, before I do that, what I want to do first is I want to open up the Layers menu, which is located over here. Or you could press Control, Shift, and L on the keyboard to open that up. Now, if you notice here, everything that we've created so far exists on this one layer. I want to put the texture on its own layer. So I'm going to click this button up here that says Create a New Layer. I'm going to leave the default as it is. Make sure you have the position set to Above Current and click Add, and there's our new layer. So I'm going to take my texture image. I'll have a link in the description to where you could download this texture image. Just go ahead and copy and paste it into your document here, or you can just click and drag the file onto your canvas, which is what I'm going to do. Make sure you have Layer 2 activated so it places it on Layer 2, and I'm just going to click and drag it onto my canvas like that. And the, uh, the options I'm going to choose here, I want to choose Embed, I want to choose Default Import Resolution, and then None, and then click OK, and there's the texture image. So let me select this rectangle right here, the background, and I'm going to right click this and go to copy. And then I want to select the texture image and I want to go to edit, paste size, paste size. And that's going to make it the same size as the background there. And now what I can do is I can select the texture, hold shift, select the background so we have them both selected. Come back over here to the align and distribute menu and center that up vertically and horizontally like that. And then click off it to, de to uh, deselect everything. Now what I will do is I will select just the texture image, come back over here to the layers menu, and where it says blend mode, I'm going to set this to soft light. Right there. And there you go. That is how you can create that uh, long shadow text. Now once you apply that, you may want to change a few things. Like I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. That shadow looks a little lighter now that the uh, texture has been applied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock layer 2 up here so that I can't change the texture. And I'm going to continue working on the objects down here. So with layer two locked, the texture stays in place and you won't be able to move it. So I'm going to select layer one and then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select the shadow. Let me come back over here to the fill and stroke menu. Maybe make that a little darker. That looks good. And I'm going to grab the gradient tool and maybe change the gradient of this inner shadow right here. Maybe bring that down a little bit. So that's a little more visible. Okay, looking good. Let me go back to the Select tool. Now, if you want to bring down the intensity of that texture, what you can do is you can come back over here to your Layers menu. You can select Layer 2. You can unlock it. And if you, you can unlock it. And if you want, what you can do is you can select this image, come back over here to the Fill and Stroke menu, and you can change the opacity of the image to control the intensity of that texture like that. So I'm going to put it back up to 100% of where it was because I like how that looks like that. And that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating this long shadow text effect using Inkscape. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.